In this video, we're going to talk about a very important question in linear algebra. How do we determine whether a vector is a linear combination of some other vectors? So case in point, let's consider three vectors. A1, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, one of my favorite vectors. A2, 1, 0, 0, 1. And A3, which is 3, 0, 5, 7. While it's easy to create linear combinations of A1, A2, A3, just pick your three favorite numbers to use as scalars. What we need to determine is if we have a specific vector in mind, B, which in this case will be negative 7, 4, negative 4, negative 9, is B a combination of these three vectors? Now, if B were a combination of these vectors, then there would be some scalars x1, x2, x3, which would multiply by a1, a2, a3 respectively and add together. This would add up to be the vector B. Therefore, determining whether we are whether B is a linear combination of A's or not is equivalent to solving this vector equation. And as we've seen before, solving this vector equation corresponds to solving a system of linear equations whose augmented matrix is presented here below. Now, when one constructs this augmented matrix, let me point out to you that there's a correspondence between the vectors and the columns here. The first column of the matrix is just the vector A1. The second column of the augmented matrix is just the vector A2. And the third column of the coefficient matrix is just the vector A3. So these are the vectors that are going to be combined together, coefficient matrix. And then the augmented column is the vector B, that is the vector we're trying to determine whether it's a combination or not. And so we would want to go about uh, solving this system of equations using this augmented matrix as learning about row reducing matrices. Let's see a little bit of details of what's going on here. So for the first one, well, it's the starting off, we're going to have a pivot position in the 1, 1 position. The first column is the first is the leftmost non-zero column. We put a pivot position in the first spot. Fortunately, we already have a 1 in the pivot position, so that's great. So we want to get rid of the numbers below the pivot just by a row replacement. We're going to take row 2 minus 2 times row 1, row 3 minus 3 times row 1, and row 4 minus 4 times row 1. That means we're going to take minus 2, minus 2, minus 6, and plus 14. For row 3, we're going to get minus 3, minus 3, minus 9, and plus 28, uh, 21, sorry. And then for the last one, minus 4, minus 4, minus 12, and then plus 28. And so if we add those things together, right, 2 minus 2 is 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, uh, 0 minus 6 is negative 6, and 4 plus 14 is 18. For the third row, uh, we're going to get 3 minus 3 is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, 5 minus 9 is negative 4, and 21 minus 4 is 17. For the fourth row, the 4s cancel out there. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3, 7 minus 12 is a negative 5, and negative 9 plus 28 is a 19. So we do all those row operations there. Now, if we were to follow the... If we were to follow the uh, Gaussian elimination technique, what we would do is we take the pivot in our second position, our, our, the 2, 2 position is then our pivot, which is great. Uh, and then we want to get rid of these numbers below right here. And so we accomplish that by taking row 3. We're going to take uh, a minus 3 halves row 2. But I'm going to stop you right there. Whenever I can avoid it, I don't want, I don't want to use fractions. So we're going to take a slightly different approach. Uh, so one thing I noticed is that when you look at row 2, everything's actually even. So deviating from the standard algorithm, I'm going to divide everything in this row by negative 1 half. I should say divide everything by negative 2. So we're going to scale the row by negative 2. Uh, what that's going to do for us is that, well, 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. 1, or negative 2 divided by negative 2 gives us a 1. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3. And 18 divided by negative 2 is a negative 9. So you get a nice coefficient of one right there and then you can proceed like you were doing already but another observation i'm going to make here is that these numbers right here i want to get zeros below the negative two um and how i do it as long as i don't break the and so one way of doing that is i could take row four minus row three that way no multiplication is actually necessary you're just going to take a plus three a plus four and then you're going to get a minus 17. And so when you do that, you're going to get a zero for the second column, a negative one for the first column, and then you're going to get a negative two for this for the last column right there. So very quickly, you were able to get the zero there. Still have to get a zero here, and we basically can't avoid another row operation. We're going to have to do R3 
plus three times row two this time. So we get a three, we get a nine, and we're gonna get a negative 27 right there. Also, I would like that to be a positive one. So I'm gonna take the last row and times everything by negative one. So when I do that, by times the last row by negative one, I get a one and negative two, which is great. But then in terms of row operations, the replacement, those will cancel out. Nine minus four is a five. And then negative 27 plus 17 is a negative 10. We're good right there. And so now you see that your third and final pivot position will be in the three, three spot. It would be great if there was a one right there, which you know what? I already have a one. I'm like a carpenter thinking one step ahead. In which case we can, we can swap the one and the five and therefore we get a one in our pivot position like so. Now to get rid of the five below, we're just gonna take row four minus five times row three. You can see what's gonna happen here. You're gonna minus five and a plus 10. These things cancel entirely. You can get this row of zeros. Now this row of zeros should give us pause. It's not a contradiction and now we're in echelon form. So we see that our matrix, uh, since it's an echelon form, the corresponding system of equations is gonna be consistent. We can see that there's no contradictions in an echelon form, so the system is consistent. Coming back up to the original question, right? Is B a linear combination? Is B a linear combination of A1, A2, A3? Because this system is consistent, the answer to this question is yes. Now, once we get the question, the answer to the question is yes, we typically want to follow it up with, well, how do you do it then? How is it done? So we have to continue solving the system of equations. So picking up where we left off, we have this echelon matrix right here. I want to get rid of these threes right here, so I'm going to do row replacement. Take row one minus three times row three, and we're going to do that same thing for row two. Row two minus three times row three. So we get minus three minus three. Uh, we're going to get plus six plus six. These will just cancel, giving us the zeros we expect. And then negative seven plus six is a negative one, and negative nine plus six is a negative three. Now the last thing to do is to get rid of the one that's in the position right here. Uh, we're gonna do row two minus row one. So we get a minus one and we're going to get a plus three. So this cancels giving us a zero and then negative one plus three is a two. So this right here is our row reduced echelon form. From this we can see the solution is exactly gonna be x1 is two, x2 is negative three and x3 is negative two as illustrated right here. These are the coefficients of the linear combination. Notice if I take two times a1, negative three times a2, and then negative two times a3, that's gonna give you the vector b. And if you have any doubts about that, we can actually multiply these things out, right? Two times the first vector gives us two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? The next one gives us a negative three, zero, zero, negative three. And then the last one gives us a negative six, zero, negative 10, and negative 14. Combining all these things together, you're gonna to get two minus three minus six. You'll notice that two and negative three come together to give us a negative one, minus six is a negative seven. Well, that's, that's good to know. Um, you're gonna get four plus zero plus zero. That's an easy one to do, that's a four. And then the next one, you're gonna get six plus zero minus 10. That should be a negative four. Oh, there you go. And then finally, eight minus three minus 14. Eight take away three is five. Five take away negative four, uh, five take away 14, it's gonna be a negative nine. And so we can check our work. In fact, this is the right linear combination that forms B.